Howdy folks and welcome to North Carolina and the beautiful curvy Blue Ridge Parkway. And this is the 2024 Dodge Hornet RT. It's the big bad boy amongst all of them. And on top of that, it's a plug-in hybrid, the most powerful of the Hornets. And I'm curious to see how it drives, and I know you are too. When we saw this in the studio, the Dodge designers told us about the front end resembling other Dodge products, and I think you guys will agree. Now, what does this mean for performance? Well, it's a relatively aerodynamic shape, and it does have functional heat extractors on the hood. I know it's really windy, guys. You'll have to bear with me on this. But it does have this lower valance, and there is plenty of room for the radiator, even though it's powering a 1.3 liter tiny little turbocharged engine. We'll get to that in just a second. But the squinty look Dodge is definitely here. You can definitely see the resemblance between the Durango and even the Charger. And I'm gonna say the rear end is similar to that. We'll get to that. But because this is the track pack version, this actually has all the packages combined. It has these massive painted 20 inch wheels wrapped in Michelin rubber. It also has, you can clearly see the red caliper underneath. And I don't know if you can actually see the suspension from there, but it does have Coney shocks, which are adjustable. And that's based on the drive mode that you put it in. We'll talk about that as we're driving the vehicle. Now this is all blacked out. So it has a blacked out little angry Hornet right here and blacked out badging, black mirror caps. All of that tells people you mean business and you're gonna sting them several times. It's like a murder hornet. No, it's, it's really not. Well, I, maybe it is. Come on over to the back because from the side, I'll be honest with you, it's not all that dramatic. I mean, there's only so much they could do with it. Now, you're looking at the side. Understand that the platform and many of the components are shared with the Alfa Romeo Tonale. So there is a lot of that baked in here, but they won't talk about it. In fact, they almost threw things at some of the people who were asking about it. Bottom line is that platform and components are shared with it. Let's move to the back because they did something I'm very happy about. Yep, that's real exhaust. Doesn't make a ton of noise, but it works and it's not fake. Yes. Also back here, you can clearly see what I was talking about with this taillight design. Looks very similar to the Charger and also, of course, the Durango. This is like a baby brother to the Durango. Functional rear wiper. Not everybody's doing that nowadays. It's kind of funny, but this is not a separate hatch. This will not open separately. You have to go down here to open it. Way down there. Okay. Now, inside, you have almost 29 cubic feet of space behind the second row seat. Fold everything down and does fold somewhat flat. Then you have over 55 cubic feet of cargo space. By the way, that's not class leading, but it's on the higher end. So it's not middle, it's up and back, near the top, but not at the top. Overall interior design, we'll get to that in a second, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of how slow this goes. Ironically, this is a really quick car. So having a slow trunk is sort of irritating. All right, let's talk about the engine. All right, under here is a 1.3 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. Can't really see much down here. Now I'm gonna huddle here so you can actually hear me, not the wind. But there's more and that's because this is hooked up to an electric powertrain as well. In other words, you have combined numbers. So 288 horsepower, 383 pound three to, of torque. It's like real, a lot. So, okay. The only way you can really tell this is a hybrid looking under the hood is really seeing the orange wires over here. It's hooked up to six speed automatic transmission, not the nine speed that's in the GT. They say it's for packaging and performance reasons. Now, because of that, it's basically front wheel drive, but similar to the way Toyota does it with the Highlander and the RAV4 and a bunch of their other vehicles, they have an electric motor in the back with its own transaxle feeding the rear wheels. That means that you have two different power sources, which is why all those numbers combined go so high. And the cool part is you're able to squirt power to that rear to give this thing the power shot, which I will show you as we drive. But I wanted to show you a couple other things. First of all, there are no official EPA numbers in terms of regular gas mileage, but 
You do have a 15.5 kilowatt hour battery in this vehicle right next to the gas tank and it'll give you up to 30 miles range. The only way you can really tell that this thing is different than the GT is starting from here. This is where the regular gas goes in, right? But come here, come here. Blam, blam! This is what the big deal is about. You actually have a place to plug in and charge, which will take, if you're on level two, up to about two and a half hours, give or take, or if you're on 110.2, or sorry, 120, well, let's just say it's about seven hours, give or take. So, actually a fairly good sized battery. Once again, 30 miles range, up to 30 miles range. Now we've drained a majority of that because we're idiots and we're just driving around this highway and it's a real fun highway to really bash it. But there are different modes, which I'm gonna show you inside the car that allow you to regenerate some of that power that you lost. Bet you're wondering about that tax credit. Well, it's a little complicated, but let's simply put, this vehicle is built in Italy. So, tax credit you can get with leasing. That may change in the future if they start building them here in the United States. I'm gonna show you the paddle shifters in just a minute. Now we're trying to regenerate a little bit of energy back to the battery because we sucked it all up coming up here. But there's something about this car you should know. It's quick. Here we go. Now it's snapping off gear changes on its own. Remember, it's a six speed, not a nine speed. But the transitions are very smooth. Now, when I use this, and go into sport, make sure I'm in sport. Yep, there we go. There we go. Yes, see, it's letting me play around a little bit. But I want to get to a straightaway, which I'm coming up to, and I'm going to show you power shot. Okay, you guys ready for that? Now there's two ways you can use it. You can either use it as you're driving, which will give you a little extra scoot in traffic, 30 extra horsepower. Or you can use it kind of like launch control. So there I am, both of these. See that white thing? Basically means I'm ready to go. And wham Alabama, we're gone. Yeah, it's it's not a super surge. It's not like an extra turbo on top of the fact that this is already a turbo, right? It gives you an extra boost, but off the line, it's almost seamless. Now, I bet you're wondering about handling because that really is what Dodge is trying to hammer into our heads is the fact that both their vehicles are built for handling. This one, especially with all that extra power and with the track pack that it has, you have adjustable suspension. So when you go from your regular modes to your sport mode, Everything changes. The whole car wakes up. Not that it was asleep in the first place. Watch what I do with this screen, which by the way, that is over 10 inches of goodness. Ba-boom, cameras, and quite a few of them. So these cameras allow you to shift through, and I've noticed that with the Uconnect, this is Uconnect 5, by the way, the system itself, I really do have good command of these things. And this is the reverse cam, and yes, shows you your trajectory, where you're gonna go. I do like that. Let's hop back here, put my feet underneath. Yeah, not a ton of room for my feet underneath, to be honest, but the leg room actually isn't horrible. Headroom is quite good, and that has to do with the way they scalloped the roof. If you sit in the middle, you will run out of headroom over here. There is a vent, or vents I should say, and you have USB and USB-C in the back here. And this folds down, armrest, drink holders, and rear pass-through. Seating position, if you're really tall, I have a feeling you might run out of leg room. There's something to be said about seats that don't adjust unless you turn the car on. And for some people, they may not find the seats that comfortable unless you go all the way up to the track pack. So keep that in mind. Oh, one final thing. Don't take them off road. They're not made for off road, baby. They're Dodges. They're made for the street. Just keep that in mind. I'll see you next time.